Sue, I, I think you, you coined the phrase many years ago, a statistical approach to value outside of the normal market cost and income approaches. And, and I, I think that's even more valid today. Yep. Okay, we, we appreciate those responses. Let's move on to our myth number two. This is uh, generated from the Dodd-Frank Act and interagency guidelines. In this space, lenders can outsource their collateral risk responsibility, including quality control checks and compliance. Sue, why don't you, what do you think about this comment? <laughs> well, I, of course, have an opinion about this one. Uh, lenders truly are ultimately responsible. And when HBCC was introduced, it was seen by appraisers as a declaration of appraiser independence. And in fact, I think it turned out to be a declaration of independence for lenders from appraisers. And in order to develop and build the firewalls, appraisal management companies were put in place. And the lenders basically abdicated their responsibility for the appraisal process. The requirements, as I see them in Dodd-Frank, for is for lenders to accept and take responsibility for the practices of the AMC. Many lenders who took that perceived easy and quick way out by engaging and contracting with AMCs are now learning that they maybe don't know enough about the service providers or the selection criteria that the AMCs they've engaged have been using. So lenders are going to have to dig in a little bit more, not a little bit, probably a lot more, into the practices and QC processes of their AMCs, put in place quality control and automated review processes over the top of the work that the AMCs do, <clears throat> excuse me, because they are, we are as lenders going to be responsible for that data that's delivered through UDCP. We're going to be held accountable and responsible for the correct criteria reported in UAD. There's a lot of scrambling that's going to go on right now by lenders, and it's time to start scrambling now. And we have to take control of what we've always been responsible for. So um, those are my thoughts about uh, appraiser or lender responsibility within the new and current and existing requirements. Can this John, go ahead. <laughs> Sorry, this Everybody. is John. Uh, I have to echo what Sue said, that um, at the end of the day, it is a responsibility for the lender. However, as an AMC, we need to really work on the collaborative nature of our, our relationship and the partnerships we form. Uh, we're seeing an unprecedented effort being put forth by the AMCs to, you know, improve the valuation process and you know, scrutinize, scrutinizing our, <clears throat> the management of our panels, our fees, our order assignments, our geographic competence, um, expanding our communication efforts with the lenders and the appraisers to make the process more transparent, um, then are performing multiple levels of automated and manual reviews. And I, I definitely think the bar has been raised, um, but again, at the end of the day, it is the lender's responsibility. And uh, as an AMC, it's our responsibility to support the lenders and, again, be more collaborative in the, in, in the effort for the evaluation process. Um, we need to provide the, the lender, our lender partners with the, the data necessary to maintain the re their regulatory compliance and make decisions. Um, again, we need to be as transparent as possible on our appraisers, our fees, uh, down between the, the split of the appraiser and the AMC. We need to offer you know, more reporting behind our reviewing results so the lenders can understand the, uh, you know, which appraisers are performing or not performing and why. Um, also need to really work on maintaining lines of communications between the lenders and the appraisers so that the lenders can understand uh, what the appraisers are experiencing in the field and understand what delays, why delays are happening or why fees are going up or down uh, and get some of the, the appraiser feedback. I think that's, that's really lacking. And I think if all that's met, um, regularly communicated between the, the three groups, I think that it will maintain a very good good and collaborative partnership. You know, at, at Lee, Lee Kennedy here, uh, John, I think I think you hit the keys to success on the head in using a third-party vendor. Uh, the, 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 the 
what I took from that was independence, transparency, collaboration, communication, information reporting. Uh, being a, a vendor and, and a third party provider of testing and, and consultative uh, products to, to lenders, I, these, we provide things that the lenders don't or, or don't or can't do in house and don't have the subject matter expertise. So I think those are the keys to success. Again, independence, transparency, collaboration, communication, and, and getting that information reported back to the lender so that they can meet their regulatory burdens. Now, I think that two institutions and lending organizations have thought that they could hand off this responsibility um, in, in manpower. I mean, you know, just really not even having internal appraisal management and appraisal expertise, that that, that could actually be handled by non-valuation experts. I think that institutions are learning now that maybe it takes an appraiser to know an appraiser and to understand the idiosyncrasies. John, you alluded to systems and system outputs, and that's a lot of work, and that's a lot of analytics, and that's information that needs to be looked at. Internally within our organizations, we have workflow and directions that we need to take as a result of the conclusions generated by those systems. Answers are north. We can let things continue on through. Answers are south. We need to have due diligence and follow-up to correct that. There has to be internal audits and, and um, uh, random selection. We have to have professional appraisal resources internally within our organizations to work collaboratively and trans and and unless you understand the transparency you're not even going to know that transparency exists so we need resources i um i think that that you know there's a huge potential and a huge need for appraisers who are interested in uh, pursuing a more institutionalized uh, career path than ever before. Well, the valuation in these appraisals, everything's happening so quickly, and that takes us into myth number three. And Sue, you alluded to this earlier, but this myth states that the GSEs push back the UMBP date, so I have plenty of time before I need to start thinking about uh, getting connected. <laughs> well, why don't you just sit back and relax, Dave, um, <laughs> and just and and we'll just all sit on our thumbs and wait until the very last minute to do this, and we'll expect the whole appraisal industry to turn on a dime. And those of us who have been around a while know that this industry doesn't turn on any dime. UAD will go into effect and affect every appraisal and every appraiser that does mortgage work. And that's the bulk of residential appraisers in the industry and it's not too soon to begin communicating and working with the service providers the appraisers the AMC's uh, the date the um, oh, the forms vendors and everybody else who's responsible for reporting or finding a way to report this information appraisers are eager always have been uh, to accommodate change. We learned this when we asked them to start digitally delivering their appraisal reports back in the late, 90, late 90s and early 2000s. And they were happy to do it as long as they understood the requirements and knew how to incorporate the changes into their reporting habits. And habits are hard to break. We as lenders are going to be responsible for the data. I said it before, and I don't think we can say it often enough. We need to provide clear and concise instructions and directions. The GSEs expect it from us. The GSEs do business with appraisers through lenders. That means that we have to be the voice, and we have to communicate. And we have to practice before this requirement goes in. So the sooner we start practicing, the better off we're going to be. And practice will make perfect, right? Definitely. OK. OK, so if we go on to the next slide, this is I'm going to talk a little bit about this. And then John and Lee and Sue just, just covered some of this at a very high level. But as you, as you consider what takes place in the appraisal, the order, 
the tracking, the retrieval, um, ultimately the review, and now the submission of that electronic appraisal into UCDP. There are a number of steps. Now, the lenders ultimately, as been stated many times here, ultimately are responsible for that valuation and what they're ultimately going to submit into, up to, into UCDP and UMDP. However, that doesn't mean that there, there aren't tools available to assist those lenders. So if you, if, if you go through the same process, the, the placing the order, the routing the order to the AMC or the individual appraisal, the tracking that order or that appraisal that comes back into the system, there's automated QC checks, appraisal checks, and scores that can be run to help assist and then route towards the appropriate review appraiser. Uh, that information can be logged and stored within the lender's database for their uh, additional review and benefit in future reviews in the months and years ahead. Um, ultimately, that information will be electronically submitted into the UCDP. The uh, doc file IDs, any unique identifier or reports that are generated from the UCDP and pushed back to the lenders can be stored in these types of systems. Again, it allows for the reporting and the continual use and benefit of this type of data. I definitely wanted to introduce this because many lenders are thinking that they have to go through this process themselves, either through a manual process or their internal IT resources. Um, there's a number of companies like Veros that have these platforms readily available. These platforms work with AMCs, with LOS companies, uh, with anybody along the lines from this uh, mortgage application and the appraisal and evaluation procedures. So again, ultimately the lender is responsible for the valuations and the appraisals that are submitted, but there's a, a number of different uh, uh, vendor partners, and there really, there really is a partnership that uh, the companies like Veros can, can assist in this process. So we'll continue on. We're going to try to open it up for questions. Again, I'd encourage anybody, there's been a steady flow of questions coming in, which we appreciate. Um, if there's any topics or questions you'd like us to address, please continue to send those over and we'll address that. Um, before we get to the questions, we're just going to quickly touch on what's next. And as we click in and we consider the Dodd-Frank Act, the interim final rule compliance, everything that's associated with that in the interagency guidelines, I think the message that we've talked about over and over again is these things continue to evolve. There's more information, there's more clarification, and there's more decisions that need to be made as these things uh, continue to be rolled out and applied. 